So when you hear the words, go for launch, you'll definitely want to hang out. No, wait, Hook! I can explain! I didn't want to bother you, see? There was Walter Cronkite, and storyboards, and animators. Hiya! Mickey Mouse here. Well, not here exactly. Jeez, I'm fried. Let's get out of here and find some shade. W. -W Radio. You're in everybody and welcome to the WW Radio Show, your Walt Disney World information station. I am your host, Lou Mangello, and this is show number 399 for the week of March 15th, 2015. I'm here once again to help you have the best possible Disney vacation experience and bring you a little bit of Disney magic wherever you are with this podcast, videos, blog, live broadcast every Wednesday, special events, books, virtual tours, and more. Whether you are planning your first trip or you love digging down into the details, the history, secrets, and stories, there is something here for you. You can subscribe to the podcast in iTunes and find everything else over at www.radio.com. This week, I want to once again invite you to come and sit virtually with me at the table as we do a live restaurant review of the landscape of flavors over at Disney's Art of Animation Resort. Not your typical food court, the landscape of flavors will likely pleasantly surprise you, your appetite, and your budget with a wide variety of options, including many not found anywhere else in Walt Disney World. I then have the answer to our last Walt Disney World trivia question of the week and pose a new challenge for your chance to win a Disney prize package. And don't forget that you can learn how you can help support the show and be a member of WDW Radio Nation, where you'll have access to exclusive content, rewards, events, and products like custom Magic Band covers, monthly scavenger hunts, logo items, discounts, special call-in shows, and much more. You can find out or join by visiting wdwradio.com slash support. And be sure and stay tuned to the end of the show for more announcements and your voicemails. So sit back, relax, and enjoy this week's episode of the WDW Radio Show. Before I get into the show, I want to quickly say thank you once again, because thanks to you, WDW Radio has been nominated for a podcast award in the travel category over at podcastawards.com, and now I need to ask for your help. Please go to podcastawards.com and cast your vote for WDW Radio for a podcast award in the travel category. You can vote once every 24 hours, and now more than ever, every vote is so very important. Also, be sure to verify your vote via the email link that you get from podcastawards.com. Voting ends March 24th, so you only have about seven days left. Takes just a few seconds to do it again. I would really appreciate it if you did. It's podcastawards.com. Thanks so much. Let's get into the show. If I ask you to close your eyes, unless you're driving, please don't close your eyes. If I ask you to close your eyes and think of dining at Walt Disney World, where does your mind or your stomach take you first? For a lot of people, it's probably their favorite restaurant inside a theme park, maybe exploring the culinary options throughout World Showcase and Epcot, or maybe thinking about your, your favorite home resort hotel and your favorite restaurant that's located inside. For others, they may have a favorite sit-down location. For me, it could be Blue Zoo. For you, it could be Kona Cafe. It might be somewhere else throughout one of the dozens of Walt Disney World Resort hotels. But I think all too often, when people think about dining, even if they go outside of the parks or go outside of the resort that they're staying at, all too often, people don't venture out to some of the other opportunities and experiences that are available at resort hotels that maybe they're not staying at. And when they do, oftentimes it may be at a sit-down restaurant. 
But today, I want to do something a little bit different. I want to do another live restaurant review at a resort that maybe you've never stayed in before and possibly a dining experience that you've never tried before either. Because unless you've been to Disney's Art of Animation Resort and stayed here at this incredibly well-themed value resort that opened back in 2012, unless you've actually stayed here, you may have never tried the landscape of flavors. And I am sitting outside by the pool near the drop-off bar on a perfect Florida evening with some people who are going to join me for another live restaurant review. And you might recall that I recently did a review on the show of the newly reimagined and remodeled and reopened Captain Cook's in at Disney's Polynesian Resort Village and Bungalows Hotel. And those reviewers are back with me once again. They are uh, not just wonderful reviewers, they're also my family. So I want to introduce you once again to Deanna. Hello, everyone. And Nicholas. Sup, dog. <laughs> Sup, dog. Oh. <laughs> and Marion Rose. Hello. And Marion, how old are you? Eleven. Nicholas? Nine. I, I'm Deanna, I'm not going to ask you how old you are. You're celebrating the anniversary of your 29th birthday exactly. once again. Exactly. So we were talking on the way here when I said we were going to do sort of a surprise restaurant review. And when we were saying we were going to do it at a resort, all of you sort of started guessing places like, are we going to Kona Cafe? Are we going to a fancy sit down? We start thinking about table service restaurants. We don't think about some of the counter service options that are that you can find at some of the uh, resorts as well. And I think this is one of the ones that is my favorite. Now, we've been here a couple times in the past. We're sitting here overlooking the uh, Finding Nemo section, the car sections off of the distance, the Lion King and Little Mermaid. But the food court here, and, I, and I'm using air quotes as if you can see me, the food court here is known as Landscape of Flavors, and it really offers an incredibly wide variety of options. I think for a lot of people, they think food court, or they think resort food court, they think it's going to be hamburgers and chicken nuggets and french fries and just a lot of sort of quick grab-and-go items like that. Landscape of Flavors really, like the resort itself, really sort of reimagines reimagines what the resort food court looks like. It's open for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and has actually a number of different stations throughout where you can get a wide, wide variety of uh, of offerings. And now we were talking on the way here, when, you were, when the kids were asking where we were going to go, you actually said you hoped that we were going to Art of Animation because you, you love this food court the few times that we've been here. I think it's so delicious, the giant variety, and I feel like it's amazing and delicious. You just want to you just want to eat your way to get to the gelato bar. Now I know exactly where your mind and your stomach go to. Yeah, it's so delicious. It's my favorite, but I can't eat it. <laughs> so what I love is that they have so many different varieties of smoothies. They also have all these different um, areas where you can create your own. So they have a variety of, of different things that they have, like a create your own salad. They have a create your own burger. They have a create your own pasta. So for me, I like certain things in my pasta and on my burger, so I love that you can pick and choose exactly what you want. Yeah, you really can sort of make it your own. It's not just sort of ordering from a, a limited selection on the menu. And the, even if you don't make your own, there are an absolute ton. I mean, there are literally are dozens of different entrees on the menu. Now, again, we're here in the evening. We're here for dinner. There's a wide variety, for example, of kids meals and yes they've got corn dog nuggets and grilled cheese and macaroni and cheese but they've got chicken burgers and drumsticks the kids can create their own salad or make a turkey sandwich of their own but what i like is the 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 options here really sort of cover a wide spectrum a very wide landscape so like for example cosmic rays where there are different bays there are different bays here and let's let's go inside and let's sort of walk up to some of the bays because what I like to is not just being able to read the items off the menu, but see the pictures and then smell them as well. So in addition to a number of on-the-go entrees and pastries and desserts, items you can just take out of the cooler, there are really four, well, five different shops. There's the soup, salad, and sandwich shop, the world of flavors, pizza and pasta shop, the burger shop, and Marion's favorite, the gelato shop. But we'll save that till the end if you guys eat all your food. So here at the soup, salad, and sandwich shop, here there's six different items, not including kids' meals, 
So there's a buffalo style turkey sandwich with turkey, blue cheese, arugula, buffalo sauce, uh, a, sam a salmon club sandwich, a patty melt, a caprese sandwich, and a combined waffle with barbecue pork. Wait a minute, I need to look at this one a little bit more closely. It's shredded pork on a cornbread waffle drizzled with chipotle barbecue sauce with choice of house-made chips or coleslaw. There's also a create your own salad and a number of different kids meals. We're gonna have to get the waffle and barbecue pork just for research purposes. <laughs> See Nick, I, I like I like how you roll. Walking down over to the world of flavors, this is where I think landscape of flavors kind of breaks the mold because the items here are things like a tandoori boneless chicken thigh, tandoori shell on shrimp, butter chicken with basmati or multigrain rice, non bread, which is one of my favorites. You also get two sides, those are all about nine, ten dollars. Vegetarians have roasted vegetable plate. There's also a lentil crusted fish, which I've had in the past, which is phenomenal, and a gluten free meatloaf, and you're starting to see that a lot more vegan, vegetarian, and gluten-free items. But things like tandoori chicken and tandoori shrimp and butter chicken, not things you'd normally find at a counter service location in a resort, especially like at a value resort like this, not something you expect to see on the menu. No, that's why here you can come and get a variety and all this different ethnic food. I love it. Yeah, and it's, what's nice is, you know, it's like World Showcase. You can sort of sample and sort of taste your way. Absolutely. And, and nothing is too scary, right? Nothing is very spicy. You can sort of expand your culinary horizons just a little bit. I'm really, really excited about the non about the non bread and that squash stuff. That's like my favorite thing ever. Yeah, and that tandoori chicken. Huh? What's nice too, you can, you see all the pictures. You know, everything looks great. And as soon as you walk in, the like smell. you could smell it like right away. Definitely, the smells awesome. So next is pasta, pasta and pizza, where you can create your own pasta. So you have a variety of different sauces and fresh ingredients, including chicken or shrimp. There's a red sauce, there's cream sauces, there's vegetable pizzas, meatball sandwiches with Caesar salad, a cheesy pesto bread, and a saffron seafood pasta. Again, saffron seafood pasta is not something you would expect to find in a, a counter service location. It sounds like something you would find at a finer sit-down restaurant. Right, and the thing about saffron too is it's not a spicy thing. You can get that and share it, you know, with another person because there's plenty of it to go around. And what's great about this too, remember, we're at a value resort. All of the buildings are pretty close. All these things you can take and bring back to your room with you, especially if you stay at one of the family suites. Maybe you had a long day at the park. Maybe you just want to chill out and relax for a while. You can bring it out over by the pool area and sit outside. So if you want to have something a little bit nicer, fancier, a little bit more, um, like I said, ethnic than hamburgers and chicken nuggets. You can do that here and still sort of do it in your flip-flops and bathing suit. Right, and that's the good thing. It's just not the pizza and the chicken nuggets. It is. It's, it's a variety of things that you can take, you know, and they put it in this really neat box that you can take with you to the pool. Right, and you can, even if you want to sort of grab a vegetable or pepperoni or a cheese pizza, but if you want to sort of, if you're a pasta person, and look, as long as it has carbohydrates in it, it's for me. So they've got four different pastas, a campanile, bow tie, multigrain linguine, and multigrain spaghetti. Your proteins include chicken and shrimp. There's an Alfredo pesta or red marinara sauce. And the topics include everything from spinach to broccoli, garlic, mushrooms, peas, onions, roasted red peppers, Parmesan cheese, and Kalamata olives. So you could really, it really is not just a red sauce or a white sauce. You are making your pizza exactly how you want it. You know, the other thing too is, the healthy choices are amazing. A lot of the stuff, you can get the sauces on the side. You can pick out the exact vegetable that you want. So it's really good, especially for the kids, too. They have new power packs for the kids with yogurt and fruit. You don't have to always get French fries, so it's really, really great. Right. We're actually standing by the, the, the beverage cooler right now. It's not just sodas and water. There's milks, there's juices, there's teas, there's vitamin waters. And if you do want to pair an adult beverage, they actually have a number of individual uh, servings of wine and, and beers, as well as like lime and things like that. And the final of the different shops is the burger shop. And this has always been one of my favorites because of the different types of burgers that they have here. Here, once again, you can create your own burger. It's a third pound Angus burger on a Kaiser bun with coleslaw, house season fries, and you can sort of make it as your own. There's also the surf and surf, that's not a misspeak. It's crab cake with fried popcorn shrimp, tomato lettuce, Cajun ramelade with house seasoned fries on a brioche bun. That sounds like a whole lot of awesome. There's a ground chicken burger with queso fresco, 
black bean and celery relish that I've had in the past. It's awesome sauce and a house made vegetable burger as well as grilled cheese and nuggets for the kids. But if you want to make your burger, you can kind of really make it your way. It's not just sort of, you know, ordering what's off the menu. So you have a choice of five different cheeses, including pepper jack, Monterey jack, cheddar, queso fresco, and provolone. You can get bacon and or shrimp on top, as well as lettuce, tomatoes, sweet onions, pickles, and avocado. And there's four different sauces. There's a Cajun remoulade, a black bean salsa, a chipotle ranch, and a chipotle barbecue sauce. So you can really sort of fancy up your burger however it is that you want it. And I've had a number of the burgers here, and they are some of those bigger, better Angus burgers. So, I mean, it's like a serious burger. It's not just, uh, you know, like one of the normal burgers you might find at some of the other counter service locations. The Surf and Turf Burger. Surf Surf and Surf. Surf and Surf Burger looks like a monstrosity of deliciousness. It's Oh my gosh, it's so big. That's actually how they want that's, yeah. that's actually how they wanted to describe exactly. it. It was a monstrosity it's of deliciousness. Delicious. So Nicholas, as you walk through, what what sort of what's appealing to you? What do you think you want? <laughs> You're looking at like seven different things that you want on the menu. What do you what do you want for dinner? Chicken and waffles. Chicken and waffles. Well, yeah. <laughs> no, you want the you want the uh, the waffles with the pork. Yeah, because how bad could waffles and pork be? So look, in the in the interest of science, and by science I mean in the interest of trying as much Loving as we food. can, I think we need to get we're gonna, the waffles we're and divide pork. And conquer. We're going to divide and conquer. So well, let's get the waffles and pork. Right. I think we need to get one of the burgers. Do we get the surf and surf, or do surf we get and surf. surf and surf? Surf and surf. Yeah. Um, I think we're good on that. I mean, we don't really need to get the pasta because it's sort of just make your own pasta. We've got to get something from the world of flavor. So we've got to pick something right, out I there. I want to get this chicken with the, the tandoori, bread. The tandoori yeah. chicken? Yeah. yeah. All right, so we'll get the tandoori. We'll get tandoori chicken. We're recording and navigating. All right, so do we want tandoori boneless chicken thigh with non bread and two sides? All right, so we're going to divide and conquer. Marion, you come with me. They're, those two are going over it. Notice how they ran over to get the chicken and waffles, because I'm sure by the time it gets to their table, it's not going to have everything. It's not going to be complete. I believe so. Marion, check out the kid's chicken burger. The bun that it's on is shaped like a goldfish. Um, yeah, that's kind of... Look at the, really see, on the grilled cheese, it looks like a little goldfish, and it's got cheese. I like cheese. You can tell I'm hungry. I'm ready to just order one of everything. I'm just really excited for this. Do they have a fast? Do you guys have a fast pass? Is there a fast pass plus for landscape of flavors so I can just get one of everything? If I could pre-order before I got here, it would be a horror show. Just how I would need like 11 oh, trays of food. The turkey sandwich even looks better. It's the same thing, but I mean it's the same bun but with different stuff on inside. It's delicious. It looks good enough to eat. Yeah. Pretty much. How you doing, Yusuf? I would love to try the tandoori chicken, please. Oh, man, that's the best one. Well, the fist is the best one. <laughs> Which rice would you like, sir? Uh, basmati, please. Oh, uh, no, wait. I take that back. Multigrain. No, wait. Which one, which one do you like better? I like uh, multigrain. Like Mul- multi-grain. All right, multigrain. Just trying to throw a little bit of salt on multigrain, but... And it just sounds healthier, too, if you get multigrain. Exactly. Cheese, cauliflower, acorn squash, and I'm gonna go grab some more potatoes. You choose two. Okay. So it's acorn squash, potatoes. Uh, cauliflower and spinach. Potatoes. Cauliflower. Ooh. How about the spinach? All right. And I can go grab some potatoes if that's what you want. You want potatoes? Yeah. Squash. Okay. And so if you want the potatoes, they'll be ready in about three or four minutes. Not, you know what? Squash sounds great, please. All right. You can go ahead and swim on down this way. And don't be shy with the non bread, I'm just saying. <laughs> Thank you very much. Right, sir, you have one for night. Don't touch my non bread. You know how much you get into that bread? None of it. Look at the patty melt. What is that? A patty melt? Wait, the what? What's that thing next to it? A steak sandwich. A steak sandwich and a steak sandwich. Just charge it to the underhills. Um, Wait, do we get a patty melt or do we get one of the other burgers too? I want to get both. <laughs> you you want to get a patty melt? You got it, brother. Order a patty melt for the boy over here. Wait, they also have corn tortilla, chicken noodle, and vegetable soups. 
not only should you not listen to the show on an empty stomach, you shouldn't come to Landscape of Flavors on an empty stomach. We've eaten all the chips on this one dish already. Notice I've gotten no chips. They make homemade <laughs> chips, and we're, we've eaten them all. I'll go stand on line for the burgers. All right, so we get served. I, I, you know what else sounds really good? That chicken burger looks awesome, and it sounds healthy because it's like chicken with vegetables on it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. O M G. How many other people are eating with us tonight? Just us. Just us. You have. You, not my kid. You've got. <laughs> you've got seven things on your plate, and you say it's just us. And I'm ordering. And I'm ordering something else. I eat, cool this is why I don't <laughs> don't touch it. I gotta take pictures. Oh my god! <laughs> there may not be pictures on the, on the post for this one. Looks good. Everything looks good. Everything looks good. So she ordered it all. This is the chicken. This is the corn muffin waffle with pork, pulled pork. This is the caprice. Yeah, caprice and a patty melt. O M G. Hey man, what's going on? So I've got to try the surf and surf, man. Like I didn't even know that that was a thing. So surf and surf, surf and surf, please. Fries or coleslaw? Oh, French fries. If I'm going down, I'm gonna go down hard. Okay. That's it. That's it. Okay. Can I get your name, please? Lou. L O U. L O U. L O U. For here to go. Uh, for here, please. Okay. So I was gonna say how impressed I was at how large the portion sizes were. But that's the portion sizes before you guys got your hands on it. Oh, yeah, you, you've basically eaten an entire dish before you can get to the front. You can tell that you're my kids. Yeah. <laughs> so we have 11 trays worth of food for, for the four of us. We also need to get drinks. Now, we should also mention, too, that in addition to the gelato, there's a smoothie bar where you can create your own smoothie. But I think we've got enough in terms of food here. Why don't we get some drinks? Maybe we'll come back for some smoothies and gelato after we're done destroying all this. Yeah. Good Sound good? Gelato. <laughs> gelato. Okay. You would think we were laying out dinner like on Thanksgiving for a party of 20. We almost needed two tables. We almost actually didn't fit on one square table, but we are back outside now. Again, beautiful night. And we're gonna kind of just go around the horn here and I think what the first thing we should start off with is this tandoori chicken uh, with the naan bread. We've got the multigrain rice, squash, and uh, spinach with vegetable soup. I'm going to go first because I carry this one that's sitting right in front of me. Mmm. So. Mmm. Wow. Wow. So it, it's got like a, a a hint of like a curry flavor to it. But not like a spicy not curry. Spicy it's not a spicy curry, right? It's like a, almost like a sweet curry. It's an Indian it's flavored Indian, curry. Definitely. But the thing that I was impressed with was it's chicken on the bone, which sometimes can be a pain in the neck. You get a lot of bone. I was really impressed because it was so much more chicken than there was bone. I was expecting a large piece of bone, but as I was cutting it off the bone, there was a ton of, of chicken in there. I really, really like this because, as Dad said, it doesn't... It's tastes like curry but it's not spicy whatsoever and I hate spicy and this is not spicy at all so just so you know your kids are kind of eating Indian food just just to let you know I like it because it's like not like spicy at all it's like kind of got like a sweet and saltiness and that it's like there's not a lot of bone there's not a lot of bone and you know too it's really moist it's really really well cooked and that's sort of that 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 tandoori style of cooking the thing is, too, it's it's dark meat, so the dark meat has a tendency to be a little bit juicier, so it's really, really good. Very, very delicious flavor. Mm. Along with the rice and the um, spinach it comes with, it's cooked perfectly, and they also have a piece of <laughs> butternut squash here. There's there's sparks coming off you guys' forks. Mm. Hold on, let me try. The squash is delicious. But I don't know what this is. This is not squash. This is like uh, tofu. That's mixed in with the with the spinach. He said with the vegetable. Oh, oh, I like that. Mm -hmm. That has now. Wait a minute, and you guys are missing the best part, which the is better for me. Bread. The non bread. I literally. I will tell you that I was introduced to the concept of non bread at Walt Disney World. I was introduced to the concept of non bread at Sanaa, and I've come to love it. 
And let me tell you something. There's a lot of food on this plate. Mm -hmm. This was, I think, $9.99, $10.99. There's a lot of food on here. So the acorn, acorn squash is cooked perfectly. And I happen to love acorn squash. And I'm just testing because I can't get a, a knife in there edgewise. I'm able to cut the chicken just with my fork. I mean, it falls apart that easily. I really, really like the contrast of different flavors from like the curry tasting chicken to the really, really sweet squash. And like, I really, really like all the flavors together. It's really, really yummy. <laughs> this is a bracelet. I'm chewing. So, Dad, go first. <laughs> it's okay. I'm chewing too. Um, yeah, Mary, that's, you know, that's very perceptive. There's a lot of layers of flavor, flavors on here, and it's a full meal. Like, this by itself is far enough. I mean, you can almost share it with two people. Yeah. I like the non bread because it's so good, and it's, like, not, like, it's not, like, hard. It's, like, soft, and it's, like, very good. <laughs> and the non bread with the chicken and the rice and the spinach, that's good. Amazing. I don't even want to move on. You know what? I'm not ready to move on yet. I want to keep on going to town on this. We need to eat faster so I don't get full. (laughs) And this is why we've been married for 15 years. We need to eat faster. So I want to save the chicken, uh, the pulled pork and waffle to the end. You got a a caprese sandwich, and and that's a big honking sandwich right there. I mean, that's like seven, eight inches long on, uh, on... Oh, thank you very much. You want some? Mm. Oh. Mm. That's really, really good. Yeah, it's very mm. delicious. I got two words for you. Balsamic vinegar, baby. Mm. That's, that's three words, but baby doesn't count. It's very fresh. Balsamic vinegar, fresh mozzarella, basil, tomato. It's delicious. It's really, really refreshing, and when I first get into it, all I... I taste it like really, really sweet. It's just like a really sweet, refreshing. And then there's like the, the mozzarella and the balsamic vinegar and the spinach. I mean, the basil. It's so delicious. My favorite thing mm. ever. Mm-hmm. I wanted you to keep talking because I'm still chewing. <laughs> Nicholas, you don't know what you're missing. And look, that's kind of the kind of thing like the, the fresh mozzarella and the basil and the tomato and balsamic. That's one of our favorite meals, not just around the holidays, but one of the things that we'll have, yeah, we'll just have for dinner. And what I like, you know, the tough thing about Florida coming from the Northeast is the bread, right? It's tough to find good bread. And I was concerned, but the bread's cooked so well because it's got that crunch on the outside, but it's still soft. And and the caprese bread is very airy, but it's not doughy at all, right? It's not a very doughy bread. Mm -hmm. It's delicious. I like it because I just tried it. It's really good and it's like nice and like a tiny bit sour. Mm. Mm. Tiny bit. You're like little food Cause, network stars. Because the cheese. It's okay. The, the caprese sandwich was so 30 seconds ago. Mm-hmm. Um, all right, let's go, let's go here. Nicholas wants to go here. Let's go with the... Um, the patty melt. The patty Nicholas literally took the a giant piece and bit into it before anybody else. Mm. Oh. That's good. Oh, mm-hmm. whoa. Whoa. Look at that. I got one word. I got two words for you. Mushrooms. Oh my and onions. And onions. And, and cheese. cheese. And steak. And honey. Right. It's so crispy. This is basically... Like a grilled cheese with mushrooms, onions, and a patty, and it is delicious. Dude, you could put fried onions on anything for me, and I would eat it. If they made, like, fried onion ice cream, I would eat it. That's this. Wow. I've never had this before. Nicholas, you like this, right? Yeah, I really like this because it's the cheese gives it, like, a nice flavor, and, like, the, the fried onions make it, like, better, so it's really good. I'll... And there's only one or two pieces left. But like you said, Deanna, it doesn't come with... I guess it gives you an option of either house-made chips or a coleslaw. Yeah, we got chips on everything because the chips here are just amazing. I wouldn't know that you got chips because there's none left. So there's like four chips left on the three orders that you got. 
Uh, all right, let's stay in the burger. Let's stay in the burger realm because you guys are all excited for what seems to be like the signature burger from the burger shop, which is the surf and surf. So it's a crab cake with fried shrimp, a, a big slice of, of tomato, and what did they say? It was a, a remoulade sauce on there? Um, popcorn shrimp and I don't know what the other thing is. Fries. Now, I mean, this is like, I mean, this is, it's big, not just in diameter, it's big in height. It's like yeah, a, it's, it's like, yeah. I was going to say, it's more like a five and a half inch, six inch brick. Uh, oh. I don't think I can mm-hmm. fit this in mm-hmm. my mouth. Mm. Wow. Uh, oh, wow. Yeah, that's really good. This is a lot more different than I thought it would be. Mm. Kids, you don't like this. Put this down. So I like this because it's, um, I was afraid it was going to be too seafoody. I was afraid it was going to be too seafood, too like fishy. But the crab cake is very moist. It's also not, the crab cake is not overly bready, which is what I was expecting it to be. Like if you sort of look at the bitten through cross section of it, I mean, there's a lot of big chunks of crab. There was a lot of big chunks of crab in there. I get a nice texture with the popcorn shrimp on top because anything fried is good by definition. I really, really liked it, and the crab kind of added like a bit of a sweetness to it, mm-hmm. which made it really, really good. Nicholas, now you're not normally a seafood guy, but you like this, right? Yeah, that's really good. The tomato fell out of it, so. <laughs> that's because the tomato was like as big as your head. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I like them. Mm. And you guys are still going to town on the acorn squash. My favorite. All right, you guys, you guys fool around with that. Let's. I, I'm gonna. Yeah, I think it's time I'm that we. Go- yeah, it's time. I'm going with. I'm going Nicholas, you stick with me, kid. Let them. Let them do that. What we need to. Can you help me cut this up? Yeah. So this is. It's a. Uh, it's a cornbread waffle. God, corn. Holy, cheese and crackers. I love cornbread. You make it into a waffle, and then you put pulled pork with barbecue sauce on top. Like, I don't even... Oh. Could this be the perfect food? Your waters. Oh. It's all going to the same place. Okay, Nick, you want a bite all right. of it? Yeah. Does he want a bite of it? Water wants some. Remember when chicken and waffles was a thing? Pulled pork on cornbread waffle? Oh, my goodness. Nicholas doesn't even care. He's just using his hands, man. Out of way, brother. Right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Scale of one to ten? Ten be eleven. Yeah, you can say eleven, man. Come on. Turn it up to eleven. I like it. Oh my god. This is so good. That cornbread waffle is amazing. I love Who ever thought of making a cornbread waffle? I think for breakfast, uh-huh. they need to make the Mickey waffles cornbread. cornbread. Like I would eat that every single day. I agree. And now I think this was, uh, I don't know, I think this was $9.99 or $10.99. There's a lot, I mean, there was a lot of pulled pork on there. I mean, mm-hmm. we devoured the waffle. That poor waffle never had a chance. But there's still a lot of pork left on that plate. Yep, there is. And there's a little bit of waffle left. It. it was nine forty. so that was nine forty nine. I think that's a great value. I mean, there's a lot, I mean... You could split that among two people easily oh, yeah. because yeah. of the amount of pork that's on there. Easily. All right, so let's let's assess the damage because it, it was like an apocalypse of <laughs> food. And by the way, you know what I like too? And this is it's just a minor thing. I love eating counter service like this, but with real utensils. Like yeah. these are like they're, they're real plates. This that was one of the things that struck me the first moment to Disneyland. I, I don't know why, but I like it here. And, and I was mentioning. The value of the pork, again, that was uh, nine forty nine for the barbecue. The caprese sandwich was seven forty nine. The patty melt was nine ninety nine. The surf and turf was eleven forty nine, and the tandoori chicken was ten dollars. So we ordered five entrees, right? Some of which could have been split. And for the four of us, and again, there's no tables in Wonderland or other discounts. It was fifty two dollars. And that was a lot of food. I mean, it, it was fifty dollar. That was a fifty dollar dinner for, and it really should have been forty dollar dinner for four people, right? Because we could have cut one of those out easily. 
Easily. A, a mere mortal family would have had three and shared them amongst themselves. Right. And remember, those those were not kids' items. No. We ordered nothing off the kids' menu. None of them are kids' menu. All right, so let's kind of go around the horn and uh, everybody sit back, you know, loosen your yoga pants and, and relax for a second. Nicholas, what was your favorite? If you had to come back here and, like most normal people, only order one of these items, what would it have been? The waffles and the cornbread waffles and pulled pork. That was so good. If you had to describe the cornbread waffle and pulled pork with barbecue sauce in one word, just one. Now, if you've ever listened to my top 10, you know top 10s are usually like top 30. But one word to describe the pulled pork and cornbread. Tasty. Tasty. I dig it. Marion, what was your favorite and why? The tandoori chicken or the caprese sandwich because I love it. You're my daughter. You snuck two in. Nice. I love the tandoori chicken because there's just so many elements of it, and they give you so much, and it fills you up. Like, you could split that between between two people or three small people, and, I mean, you'd, you'd fill yourself up. And the caprese, it was just very, very refreshing. Yeah, it was a nice sandwich. I, I, I honestly was, I think, most surprised. When you ordered the caprese, I'm like, all right, it's going to be a caprese sandwich. But I think I was most pleasantly surprised at what came out with that. Um, Deanna, what was your favorite and why? So I'm going to go with the tandoori chicken first because there was just an array of, of different tastes on that plate, which were delicious. The next I'm going to go with is the patty melt. Wow. Wow. It was definitely coming out of left It field. was definitely because it was really cooked to perfection, and it was definitely could be a comfort food. Like the cheese yeah. and the mushrooms and the onions. It was it was decadent. The third I'm going to go with <laughs> is the cornbread waffle and the pulled pork. But I will say that one of our breakfasts at home is going to be cornbread waffles. <laughs> yeah, that, we need to. That with maple syrup is going to uh... be off the chain. And listen, anything with maple syrup is good. I first agree. And secondly, I also agree with the how mom said that the sandwich was perfectly cooked. Like I it's not soggy on either side. It's like golden brown and like it literally when you squeeze it juice comes out. It's juicy and moist and yum. And that's what great what's great about the toast is it soaks up all the juices from the meat and the onions and the, the way the onions sweat. Oh yeah. I also want to add in the um, what's it called? The yeah, the patty melt because it because it was so good and the bread was so crispy and it was so good. Yeah, we are, and we need to make that at home too. I mean, when we say we, I mean you because I don't actually know how those magic boxes in, in the kitchen work. Um, this is like Sophie's choice for me. It's not like asking like a favorite kid because deep down you know you have one. You just don't say it out loud. But here I'm having a tough time. Picking out <laughs> both my kids just kicked me under the table. I'm having a tough time picking it. I will tell you, I've got to give an honorable mention to the surf and surf sandwich because it was so different than anything else you get anywhere else, right? It, you think normally a hamburger. Um, it made me think of the Duval Street Burger, which is one of my favorite burgers, which is over at Olivia's, which we've got to do a live review of because that burger is phenomenal. But I think I'm going to go. I'm going to go tandoori chicken. Yeah, I can't. How am I not putting a hamburger? But li- we loved, we all raved about the cornbread waffle, but we're not, we weren't putting it first. I think the tandoori chicken gives you that little flavor of Sanaa for under $10. And what's nice, too, is not only do you get your choice of rice, but you get your choice of two other sides out of, I think there was, what, five? There was, it was four, pota- or five. four or five that you can choose from. Potatoes, cauliflower. There was potatoes, cauliflower, spinach, um the squash and there's there are those plus your rice plus your non bread and your um chicken and it's it really does fill you up and it's just a different contrast of different layers and flavor and sides and it just all comes together and all the sides you know it's not like it's just steamed cauliflower like that cauliflower was in some sort of it with either with like with peppers sauce. or tomato yeah it was in some sort of a, a red sauce there was a um that, that the curry flavor was not overpowering on both the chicken. I love the, the, the spinach. Oh, that yeah. I would eat a bowl full of that spinach like there was nobody's business. 
You know, the thing, to, the thing too, is that when, you, when you're out and when we go out to dinner, we, we all like to try different things. And coming here, you don't always eat. You know, you would always eat Indian food and just to try something different and then really like it. It was a, it was a delicious, delicious experience. And if you're going to try something like this is the way the way to do it is at some place like a counter service. Right. Where you're not sort of investing a lot of forget time, but money in maybe going to a sit down meal where your entree is going to be 20, 30, 40 dollars here. All these entrees, save for the surf and surf, were under ten dollars. I. I liked coming here because, like, all the food was so good, and it was just, like, so good. Well, another thing, too, is, and I think this holds true both for people who are visiting here, and look, we're obviously local, right? So our, our experience at Walt Disney World is very different. This is sort of our park. It's where we go to have dinner one night, to visit friends. It's less about going and riding attractions all day, every day. This was a nice little like getaway for us you know it's sort of a mini like evening staycation and I think that's one of the things that locals really need to pay more attention to are the options that they have available to them in terms of food it's not you know going to dinner a nice dinner at Walt Disney World doesn't necessarily mean you have to go to Victoria and Albert's or Shula's or Narcoosie's or Citrico's like this was a really nice evening we can walk around we're obviously going to have dessert because we have to first of all Totally agree on that dessert thing. Second of all, um, I do agree. I also agree with what Dad said about being locals. I don't think locals really, if they don't have an, a pass for Disney, they could take in the different things like going to a meal, downtown Disney, and just, you know, walking around and hanging out. We'll and we, we even just said, too, you know, we haven't been to the resort in so long. We got here and said, you know, this is so nice. We should maybe take a staycation and spend a Saturday night here and just enjoy the pool. And, and you don't have to even go to the theme park. You know, the other good thing, too, is people that do have the dining plan, this would be a wonderful experience for them to come here and do all these different tastes and flavors because they have these wonderful options such as, you know... Um, well, and, and the nice thing, too, when you walk in, they show you that if you have the dining plan, if you're on the Disney dining plan... It shows you this is a quick service meal. So for dinner, you you get a single serving, which is an entree, a dessert, and one non-alcoholic beverage. Or you can do what they call a continental combo, which is a pastry, whole food, whole fruit, and non-alcoholic beverage. That's for dinner. For lunch, the same thing. Entree, dessert, non-alcoholic beverage. And the other thing, too, is if you look at this menu, even when you walk in, it's in all different languages. So you're creating a great experience for people that don't speak the language. It making, it's making it very, very easy for people to find something that they would like to eat. And obviously the, the pictures are, are helpful too. You know, it's one thing to, to hear tandoori chicken, but when you see what the photograph looks like and it looks so appetizing, I think you're a little bit more inclined. And the people are so very helpful. Like when we ask them about the recommendations, they tell you what their favorites are. Okay. No. I know that dinner was so very filling and delicious. I listen. I know where you're going. <laughs> where do you, I, I, you're ready for dessert already? How does your little belly? Well, obviously you're my daughter. I so say, how does your little belly hold so much food in it? So I think we should go check out the the smoothie stop, the smoothie shop, and the gelato. I know you've you've got gelato on the brain. Gelato. Definitely. We'll walk it off back to the car. All right, now that we've warmed up with our appetizers, it's time to go and see what they have for dessert. First things first, they have a pastry and dessert bar, counter, display. They have turtle brownies, Rice Krispie Bites, Mickey Cabal, <laughs> Mickey Ganache, ev everything brownies, seven layer bars. There's like nine different, <laughs> nine different, oh. seven layer bar. Oh, what, all of a sudden now the gelato was so five minutes ago? They've got probably seven different types of uh, cupcakes, a pecan tart, as well as croissants and muffins and cinnamon rolls as si the size of your head. Little brownie bites. We need to get the cinnamon. So what happened? You've already moved on. For gelato was so you're done. You're over gelato. Oh no 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 no! I'm getting both. Oh. You, yeah, obviously, you're my daughter. All right, so off to the side at the market shop, 
is the smoothie bar and dessert slash gelato bar where you can create your own smoothie. There's also a strawberry banana smoothie, mango smoothie, wild berry smoothie, and a tropical smoothie. All those are under $5 or $4.99. The create your own is $5.79. And looking at the create your own smoothie bar, they have bananas, strawberries, pineapples, mangoes, raspberries, strawberries, blueberries, the snozberries taste like snozberries. So you can mix and match to whatever your, your taste is. They also have uh, lemonade, limeades, cappuccinos, iced coffee, and they have a small, well, it's not so small, gelato bar with 12 different flavors. Oh, no, I'm sorry. There's six. There's a vanilla bean, chocolate, raspberry, mango, pistachio, and honey almond. Oh, wait. Wait a second. They have Nutella. They have Nutella flavored gelato. I'm debating Nutella, pistachio, or honey almond. Thinking about it. I'm not sure. Nicholas, which one are you thinking? I don't know if I either want. Honey almond. I'm willing to try the mango or vanilla bean. I want to try the Nutella. Yeah. Uh, Then I'll get pistachio and Nutella. Okay. So we're going to get Nutella, pistachio, and which one? We're trying. We're not getting it. (laughs) Well, you got it. Well, wait. Let's pick two. How about that? Why don't we take... I think Nutella's a winner. Pistachio and Nutella. Yeah. Which one do you want? I wanted to try honey almond. All right. Honey almond and Nutella? Good deal. Let's make this happen. All right, so we are back outside overlooking a very, very busy night at the pool. More importantly, we're overlooking, what is this thing called? What is this? The Seven Layer Bar. I've had this before, and it's a bar of goodness. It's a bar. You don't actually know what's in the Seven Layers. It, there's no, there's just, some sort of chocolate. Wait, no, 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 hold on a second. There's coconut, yeah. which is a fruit, which is right? A fruit. There's chocolate, which grows on, on a plant which means it's like, like salad. salad. So it's obviously healthy. Yeah, Let's try and there's the, nuts in it. There's nut, and it's a, that's like a good protein. It's not delicious. My favorite thing. Good Gandhi. Okay, so it's peanut buttery, it's caramelly, it's nutty, it's crunchy, it's chewy, it's soft, it's, uh, it's all the feels. So if you need, if your kids need your sugar intake for the next, I don't know, seven, eight days, just give them, well, that's good. You know what that would be nice with? A nice cup of coffee, right? Sitting back by the pool, relaxing. You guys go swim around, listen to the music underwater, right? Oh, yeah. We enjoy the, uh, we enjoy coffee and that's a, that's rich. That, that's rich. The, the that's, that's a solid. That's a solid uh, seven-layer bar. The brownie portion is not really a brownie. It's like a blondie. It's like a cookie. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Which makes it healthy. Now, the trick when you go to the gelato bar. Oh wait. The trick when you go to the gelato bar is first of all they they, they come in one size. They're four seventy-nine, four ninety-nine. But you can mix and match your flavors. So we I asked her if we could do a twofer. She's like, you could do a fourfer. You could do as many. So we did Nutella, because you have to, and the honey almond. Mm. Nutty. I didn't try it. I'm still eating the seven later. Nicholas, what do you think of that? Right? That's really good. Do you know what I'm going to try? Oh, it I? on the seven layer oh. bar. I'm, I'm, As if I couldn't love you any more than I did before. You just put Nutella gelato on your seven-layer bar. Okay, ready? I'm going to try it. And now I'm about to try it. Um. Oh, my God. That's amazing. That is so good. Oh, my God. That, that's delicious. Right. Holy smokes. I'm going to dig a little deeper. Yes, that was an intentional Princess and the Frog reference. Let me see. Let me dig. Is the, Ooh. Honey, is the honey one good? Yeah. Oh, you got a really nice taste of the almond in there. Uh-huh. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna mix on my spoon. Wow. Some really Nutella. Mm. I swear we do more than just eat. We, I, I, there, there's more to my. I mean, there's not much more to my life than just food, but. There's more to our lives. Mm-hmm. I'll tell you something though. That's a nice finish to a nice meal. So, and and think about it. If you come here as an individual, right? So even if you got your own dessert, if you got your own gelato or smoothie, you're basically looking at $15. We got cups of water. We did not get fountain drinks. We got cups of water. 
If you got a fountain drink, it's two dollars. So you're looking at maybe fifteen to seventeen dollars for a meal with the side, a dessert, and I mean that's a big enough. Job. I mean the four of us are splitting it. We're not going to finish that. No, no way. Right? And your drink, like that. That's a good. I mean that's a good. That's a really good meal at a really great value. This is like a really really good like meal and it's filling. And you get you get what you pay for. I mean, it's delicious. I, I dare I say I'm full. Mm-hmm. I mean, those are two words you never really hear come out of my mouth. I'm full, Nicholas. Clearly, you are not. You're like uh, you just hit your your second, second win. Wind. You've got like a I'm second digging, stomach. I'm digging down to the gelato. I'm digging down all the way to the honey almond. You like that one better, right? Yeah, it's really good and very sweet. Well, as long as you're gonna eat that, let me help you get. Th- you know, I feel bad. You gotta dig so deep. Let me help you get some of that Nutella out of the way. We could actually use a shovel and just make it easier. It is a shovel. So, to recap, um, you know, I think people, and look, even us as locals, I think when we talk about going out to dinner, where do we go? We either go to some of the resorts, we go to sushi, but we go to sort of some of our favorite sit-down restaurants. It's not that often that we say, hey, let's go to a food court here or there. And this is one of the places that we... I obviously, obviously, we haven't been here in a long time. We enjoy it. This is an easy place to come back to. We've reviewed Captain Cook's, which we liked a lot. We need to go oh do that gosh, again that without delicious. the microphone so I can use all two of my hands at the same time to eat. We've reviewed some of the lounges, uh, Territory Lounge and, uh, and, and Meisner's Lounge. But I think we need to explore more of the resort counter service locations. I, it's one of the ones that comes to mind right away is um, over at Riverside, right? So the, the Riverside Mill Food Court mm-hmm. has some really nice lunch. Ben, first of all, beignets, beignets at breakfast. Oh my gosh, yeah. yes. So we need to... They should uh, just serve that all day long. have a beignet bar. Exactly. A beignet, <gasps> a beignet, beignet bar. bar. And you can put stuff Could on you, top Could you... Wait, wait, wait. I want, like you, sh- I want you to close your eyes for a second and just no, picture this. No, no, you guys. Close your eyes and listen for a second. Imagine sitting there enjoying the smooth sounds of Yeehaw Bob Jackson <laughs> with powdered sugar and beignets all over your face. Oh, that, amazing. that, I, I have one word for you. Heaven. <laughs> That's two words. Heaven. No, it's one word, <laughs> two syllables. One word, two syllables. So, you know what? Why don't we ask the people who are listening, why don't you tell me where you'd like to hear us review next? What resort food court or restaurant are you really curious about or maybe you never thought of before we were already, we were talking about places like Contempo Cafe the Gurgling Suitcase even Hurricane Hannah's at the, the beach all of these locations have something different and that's the key you're going to find something unique about every single one of those restaurants about the um, uh, beignet bar um, well listen to the bar Bob three syllables Beautiful. Boom. Okay, so agree with the beignet bar thing. Agree with the yeehaw bob thing. Um, yeah. Uh, if you have any suggestions on where you want us to go, also say to my dad that you want us to be in it because he does not encourage us being it. We try to encourage him. So leave a comment. We could do the WDW Radio Child protest. Join, join the fun. Listen, kid, you're lucky I unchanged you from the radio and let you out of the house tonight. The thing, too, is each one has a really unique atmosphere. So, for instance, sitting here by the pool... You know, after eating, it's a beautiful Florida night. You know, I mean, no humidity whatsoever. Flip-flops, shorts, it's perfect weather. Each place is going to have its own wonderful atmosphere that's going to bring to a wonderful memory with your family. And listen, I've always said this in the past, and it holds true. Food is always better when it's eaten, uh, when it's shared among the people that you love. Yeah. And so, we don't get uh, out very thank much. you. Yeah, we don't get out very much, but thank you guys for uh, for coming out and uh, stay tuned for future. And I and I apologize if I didn't get, post a disclaimer ahead of time. And if you listen to this while you were hungry, because if you weren't hungry before, you're you're, really you're hungry. hungry. And if you've eaten here, if you like landscape of flavors, do me a favor. Tweet me at Lou Mangiello. Leave a comment over at the show notes at www.radio.com. Click on this week's podcast, show number 399, 400, right around the corner. Leave a comment there, or better yet, 
call the voicemail at 407-900-9391. Let me know your thoughts. Or even better, call me from Landscaper Flavors. Wait, even better than that? Call me before you get to Landscaper Flavors. I'll come out and meet you, and we'll share a gelato and a hug. Time for our Walt Disney World Trivia Question of the Week, where I invite you to test your knowledge of Walt Disney World history or see how well you pay attention to the details in what you see and sometimes even in what you hear. If you think you get the answer right, you can enter for a chance to win a Disney prize package. But before we get to this week's question, let's go back, review last week's, and select our winner. So last week, I was talking about World Showcase and Wandering World Showcase, and I wanted to stay in Epcot, specifically over by the Norway Pavilion, because I said that in front of the Stave Church is a statue of a Viking, and the question was simply to identify who it was. And I was once again so very impressed this week because hundreds of you got this one correct, knowing, of course, that it was Olaf not from Frozen, but King Olaf II, who is also, by the way, the patron saint of Norway. Olaf Haraldsson also was the correct answer as well. I took all the correct entries, randomly selected one, and you were once again playing for all six of my virtual audio walking tours of Walt Disney World, and yes, Tomorrowland is coming very, very soon. A copy of my 102 Ways to Save Money for an at Walt Disney World book and a mystery gift from my Disney collection, I've been purging a lot of the things I've had in boxes for many, many years up on eBay. I'm going to pull one of those items out, send it to you as a mystery gift. And last week's winner, randomly selected, is Marilyn Chapman. So, Marilyn, congratulations. I'll send you an email. Get your address. Get your package out to you right away. If you played last week and didn't win, that's okay, because here's your next chance to enter in this week's Walt Disney World Trivia Challenge. So we're at Art of Animation reviewing Landscape of Flavors. Really forgot how much I enjoy the theming and the layout and the food and the food at that resort. And so your question this week obviously has to be about Art of Animation because although that resort opened in 2012, that location was originally planned for a resort with a different name and altogether a different theme. In fact, the buildings were already in place before the concept was changed to Art of Animation. So your question this week is to tell me, what was the original planned name of the buildings where Art of Animation currently resides? You have until Sunday, March 22nd at 11.59 p.m. Again, you're playing for all the audio tours, a copy of the 102 Ways book, and a mystery gift for my personal collection. So good luck and have fun. That's going to do it for this week's show. Thank you so much for taking the time to tune in this and every week. I understand and appreciate that your time is your most valuable commodity. And the fact that you spend some of it with me means a great deal to me. Want to start off again this week with just lots of thanks all across the board. Want to start off by saying thanks to so many of you who are members of WDW Radio Nation. Can't tell you how much I appreciate the support and the friendship and the love that you have extended to me, including my buddy Tony Mendike, Chad Angel, Catherine Neal, Sarah Foster, Zach Brown, David Potts, Father George Goulash, Ryan Geisler, Jenny Ginsburg, Corinne Tewilliger, Martin Schoengold, all the way from the UK, Chris, Gary, Zach Hoover, Barbie Schurz, Vince, Nancy Turinja, Jennifer Kaufman, David Flipkowski, Brett, Craig Hargove, Amy Peterson, Elizabeth Marsh, Barbara Hartman, Karen Azell, Beatrice Feeney, love her, Chuck Zeta, Jill Long, Tyler Oman, I love you all, Tyler Obanoff, Erica Rishu, Kelly, Disney lover, Matt Mills, Kevin Douglas, David, Megan Cook, James Desern, known you forever, man. Can't tell you how much I appreciate all of your help. There's so many more. I'm definitely going to thank you all on the show and on the site. Uh, I sincerely, sincerely appreciate it. If you want to find out how you can be part of the fun and WW Radio Nation and help support the show and get exclusive rewards, including the scavenger hunt, access to our secret Facebook group, custom Magic Band covers, logo gear, backpacks, T-shirts, care packages from Walt Disney World, lots more. Again, visit www.radio.com slash support. And don't forget to, a portion of your proceeds is going to go to the Dream Team Project to benefit the Make-A-Wish Foundation of America. 
And don't forget that if you're enjoying the podcast, there's lots more going on over at www.radio.com. We have multiple daily blog posts from a team of incredibly talented writers. Join me every Wednesday for WDW Radio Live. We do a live video broadcast and interactive chat where you can be part of our discussion about this week's Walt Disney World news and then stay on Ask Me Anything in a lightning round. Last week, I actually meerkatted it as well as broadcast it over on live. So there's lots of different ways you can watch and inter- interact Wednesday, 7.30 p.m. Eastern. We also have videos, newsletter, free app for your mobile device, and lots more. Everything is over at www.radio.com. You know, I love hearing from you. So if you have a question you want answered on the show, you can email me, lou at www.radio.com, or call the voicemail, be heard on the air, 407-900-9391. Please tweet me. I'm at Lou Mangello. Same thing on Pinterest, Instagram, Facebook.com slash Lou Mangello. And as, as much as I love connecting with you guys online and having conversations there. I am a firm believer that nothing beats a handshake and a hug. And I appreciate the opportunity to meet you in person and thank you face to face. And that's why I do monthly meetups every month in Walt Disney World. The next one is going to be Saturday, April 25th, just a few days before Age of Ultron releases in theaters. Yes, I'm that excited. So much so that we are having a pre-Age of Ultron Avengers shawarma meet. If you remember the bonus scene in the Avengers, over at the Tangerine Cafe. Again, that's Saturday, April 25th. Lots of other events planned, including cruises to Alaska, Star Wars cruises celebrating our ninth anniversary next year, and lots more on the road. You can visit the events page at www.radio.com slash events for more information. And also, if you visit loumangelo.com, you'll find out some of the other places and conferences I'll be speaking at this year. And maybe see if I can help you build your brand or your business or come speak to your association, your conference, or to your school. Again, you can find out more by visiting visiting loumangelo.com. Thanks, as always, to my partners and sponsors, Mouse Fan Travel. They are my official and recommended provider because it's who I've used for almost a decade now. Not just because I know I'm going to get the best prices, but it's really about the amazing service that you will always get from every part of the Mouse Fan Travel team, and that it all comes at no cost to you. You can visit them at mousefantravel.com and get Celebrations Magazine delivered right to your door or your digital device by visiting celebrationspress.com. And as always, my friends, and you are my friends, whether we have met yet or not, all I ask is that if you like the show, Please help spread the word. Let others know about it. Tweet out that you're listening. Share links on Facebook. And please go and review the show over at iTunes. We have more than, I think, 940 reviews now. Would love to get to 1,000 five-star reviews. Want to thank some recent reviewers, including including Chris W2323, MJ March, Ranger Meyer, Susie S25, and Disney9 from the UK. If you visit www.radio.com slash iTunes, you can find out exactly how to leave your rating and reviewing there. Thank you again, as always, for everybody who's taking the time to go and vote over at podcastawards.com. Just a few days left to do that. Appreciate the nomination. That is all because of and thanks to and for you. And I want you to wake up excited every day the same way I do because of the blessing that you give me by being able to share my passion for Disney with you. So if there's something that you want to do, if there's some sort of dream or goal that you have, that moment, that second that you're just about to quit That's the moment that you need to start pushing a little bit or a lot harder. Always keep moving forward and always have faith. And thank you again so, so very much for your time. I hope you'll have an amazing week this week. So until next time, see ya. Hey, Lou, this is John Bailey from Wilmington, Delaware. This morning on the way to work, I was listening to The Syndrome, and I almost fell out of the car when they mentioned you and the box. Great stuff. I love the show. Been voting every day. Continue the good work, my friend. Bye-bye. Hey, Lou. This is Todd from Texas. Hey, I'm outside of Hollywood Studios here on St. Patrick's Day wearing my custom Disney shirt made at Design to Tea at Downtown Disney. Hey, wanted to thank you for everything you do. It's my first time back in the world in five years, and we're just having a great time. I uh, also wanted to thank you for turning us on to uh, MEI and Mouse Fan Travel in Charlotte. It's great. Save us over $2,000. Again, appreciate everything you do. Have a magical day. Bye. Hey, Lou. It's Steve from New Jersey. So calling about your most recent podcast with Tim Foster about your favorite um, character from an attraction, I'm going to expand that just like you might and 
take it to Port Orleans, Riverside, Bob Jackson, Yeehaw Bob, because I think he is an attraction unto himself. Um, when we first started going down with the kids many years ago, and we were staying at Port Orleans, and I just happened to walk past Bob performing as I was going to the lobby for some reason, saw him, went back to the room, woke up the kids, dragged him and the kids and the wife to the remainder of Bob's show, and we've been seeing him ever since. He is a find, uh, and I think he's an attraction unto himself and something I don't think anybody should uh, miss if they get a chance to go over to the port. So that's my favorite attraction character in Walt Disney World. Thanks, Lou. I've been listening to you for uh, quite a few years now, and um, uh, you bring Disney to my life every day. Thanks. Hey, Lou, this is Brian Harvey, Brian Harvey 967 for all the people in the box. Keep up the great work, Lou. I love your show. Have a suggestion for you. Your 400th show is coming up. I know it's last minute. I just have an idea that for your 400th show, before that, the week before, you do your typical trivia contest. And the winner of the contest gets interviewed and gets to be on your show. You can find out what they collect or what they like about the parks or whatever their interest is in Disney, and that's what you discuss for your podcast show. Just an idea. I drop the mic and leave the stage. Hello, Lou Mangiello. Hello, WDW Radio Group, WDW Fox People, and the WDW Radio Disney Alaska Wonder Cruisers. We are, we are off 78 days away from going on our epic adventure to Alaska to see the glaciers, to do a whale watch, to maybe go kayaking, which I won't, to helicopter ride, to going on a um, a tram, a train. There's so much to do. And don't forget, there's a theater. There's a Broadway show stage. There's exploring the ship. We've got everything. If you haven't figured it out already, I'm Darlene Yagi from West Seneca, New York. And it's 39 degrees, and I'm testing out my North Face with a waterproof jacket so I can be ready for the temperatures of Alaska. So, with saying that, I hope you all have a magical day. Lou, Becky, thank you for everything you're doing. I know there's more to come. Um, the excitement, thank you, Becky, for organizing all of our excursions in that. This is great. And I'm really excited for um, we've got a reservation at Palo. This is going to be my first time eating in there. So it's going to be great. So you guys all will be seeing you in 78 or 80 days, depending what day you're coming in. Uh, talk to you all real soon. Hug. You've got a friend in me. Yeah. The drop-off.